in this video I'm going to be talking about what I call the sliding blue scale. I use this a lot, at least at least in in the, in the music that I play. Um, how I develop breaks, um, it's very useful. When you're taught the blue scale, I just played it out of A. When you're taught the blue scale, you're taught usually this method. <laughs> And to be honest, that's I don't find that very useful. For one, it doesn't. I'm not moving anywhere on the neck, and I can't do what's called resolve the third. I'm hitting the flat three here. So the notes in the blue scale. Let's re review those. One flat three, four flat five, five seven flatted seventh, one. Um, so it often can be looked upon also as a as 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 a minor pentatonic, with the with the addition of the flatted five. So minor pentatonic would just be without that note. Okay, so I've got the flatted third, so it makes it minor. Um, <clears throat> I've often used the blue scale and during a as as a scale to run through when I'm playing out of a minor key. You just have to be weird. Just have to be aware. I can't resolve that third. I've got to leave it flatted so it re remains a minor third. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about why is that useful? Why is, why is the sliding blues scale useful? Well, as I mentioned, it allows me to resolve that third. <laughs> scale I mean that sounds I mean it doesn't sound very musical it just sounds like a scale um, so th the the other thing about the sliding blue scale it's the feel of it it's it slides and slips around which I like um, and you can there's a there's a lot you can do with it uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of fruit there um, then the other thing is that it's a one way it's a path way up and down the neck I can navigate my way up and down the neck on that scale. And then up here, so I can navigate from here to here and then play whatever cool stuff I want to do here. I'm still out of the same scale. scale but um, bluegrass has a lot of blues so you know you need to, to learn that blue scale and this was the sliding blue scale I think has a lot of a, a lot of advantages over just learning this okay so let's let's go over what is the sliding blue scale so I'm gonna start with the instead of starting with um, the one with my first finger I'm going to start with the one with my third finger, and I'm going to catch that's the flat of three. Instead of catching the flat of three with my little finger, I'm going to catch it with my first finger on the next string down. And then I'm going to hit the fourth and slide through the flat of five to the five. And then flat of seven. thing to, to to remember is everything's two frets apart um, I don't I'm just going two frets apart until I go a transition between the third string to the second string and then it's one fret so now to repeat that now I'm about to go to the second string so I got to hit it's one fret apart what I call crunch. Crunch and then hit with my first finger. There's another way to do it. If I know I'm gonna I'm gonna um, make 
the transition from the third string to the second string, I got slide down on my second finger. And now I'm already set up. And then do it again. And now I've run out of strings. But notice where I am in that scale. I'm on the five. So to go up, I'm going to play five, added five, four, and I'm going to resolve the third on the way up. So the point of this exercise is to get, get you used to the notes and get you aware of the, what note you're actually playing. Am I playing a flat a third, a five, so you know where you are inside that scale and you know when the slide up and down so that's when the root falls on the top string same applies for G okay. so when you're on when the root is on the fifth string say D it's the same thing two frets apart until you get to that second string Here's the second string. Okay, now call off the notes. One, flat at three, four, flat at five, five, flat at seven, one. Now I'm on the one. Now I gotta get to the second string. I know I'm one fret apart. And one, flat at seven. Um, excuse me, flat at three <laughs> to the four, flat at five to the five, flat at seventh to the one. Now when I go down this way, I'm only going to resolve the third there. I'm not going to resolve it here because I've, I've got to bar those two strings. It's kind of awkward. So going, knowing where you are on the scale, so I got to go, and then I'm going to pick. slide with my first finger. So one, flat seventh, five, flat five, four, flat at third, one, and then one, flat at seventh, flat at five, flat at, um, flat at five, or one, seventh, five, flat at five, four, flat at three. song you would might this is a, a, a kind of a tag that's or, so that's and, and I can do the same thing in G so that's a, a little a little run that comes out of that side and glue scale but you first have to learn all the notes and practice, you know, 5,000 times or something. Um, playing in G, A, C, D, and E. Those are probably the main ones. If you're playing out of B, you're probably on the capo. Um, <clears throat> so the thing applies to C. So if I'm playing the tune, uh, um, 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 Dig a Hole in the Metal, which I played on one of my other videos, um, talking about the C run. It's all sliding blues go. scale gives you a lot a lot of uh, a lot of, of building blocks you can create all kinds of stuff with it um, <clears throat> another song that comes to mind it's clench mountain backstep it's nothing else this is an exercise in the blue scale most guitar players put their capo on the second fret and they play out of G the problem with that that I find is you're playing on these top strings all the time 
And those are the softest strings on the guitar. <laughs> Backstep. I mean, every time I play that song, it's, it's, a, it's a little different. Um, but that's a tune that's really an exercise in the blues scale. So that's, that's something you can probably work on. Okay, so that's a sliding blues scale. <laughs> 